expert from Stellenbosch University Center for Renewable Sustainable Energy Studies and he joins us now for a little bit more. So renewable energy is your game. You must be elated that uh, we have three uh, uh, energy providers in that space. Uh, good evening, Peter and, and the viewers. Um, yes, um, I'm happy with um, the, the current um, uh, situation with the signing of um, the three projects. They will provide just over 400 megawatts um, in, in two provinces and create the much needed jobs. Uh, over and above that, um, in the next two years or so, they will provide us with uh, the much needed uh, electricity uh, generation capacity uh, in, in, in our uh, uh, network that is struggling quite a lot. Um, I, I'm a little bit concerned that uh, Bid Window 5 took this long to reach um, a stage where they, they signed the power purchase agreement. Uh, they still need to, the three projects still need to to reach financial close. Basically, they still need to get funding from um, the DFIs or some the, some banks. And that process on its own uh, is given about 60 days to unfold. Uh, I heard the minister saying that they, they, they will try to do it within 60 days or, or in less than 60 days. And then construction obviously will take about 24 months. Um, what, what I would like to see is for the rest of the projects of the 22 projects or so, to, to sign these power purchase agreements and reach financial close quickly because the, 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 the system is currently heavily constrained. Um, I understand people saying we need to fix the, the ESCOM fleet. Um, that, that, that fleet is quite difficult. Um, I'm in constant const contact with ESCOM uh, uh, engineers. Um, it, it's going to take some time and, and some of the, the fleet that is giving us problems is supposed to have to be to be uh, decommissioned in, in line with the provisions of the IRP 2019. So, so instead of fi of focusing on fixing the the, the 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 old fleet that we need to to decommission anyway, which will be very expensive, we need to bring in new generation capacity as quickly as possible. But as you have seen, it will take time. So what do we do in the interim? A whole economy can uh, collapse in 24 months. Yeah, so in the interim, there are measures that were uh, announced by the president. Uh, there are various work streams that are working on those measures, uh, firming them up. And once they've done that, then the, the national treasury will have to make money available for implementation of such measures. And those include things such as your battery storage systems. Uh, they include um, uh, basically uh, ramping up uh, what, we, what the, the maintenance on, on some of the uh, ESCOM power stations that can still be maintained. ESCOM has already started, by the way, to, to increase the, 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 the number of megawatts that they take offline for, for maintenance. In the past, they used to, to, to take offline about 4,000 to 5,000 megawatts. Now they are taking offline about 7,000 megawatts so that by the time they return the, those to service, at least we've got some form of um, of stability in the system when they're maintaining the rest. So, so and the other thing that we can do is to look at bringing in things such as your, your gas turbines into some of the power stations and, and, and produce some of the power from, 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 from um, from LPG gas, which is basically uh, forty percent cheaper than the, the 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 diesel that ESCOM is currently burning um, at a, at a very high price. They've already exceeded their budget for 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 for, for diesel for this current financial year, and we expect that um, the the president and 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 his cabinet will have to look into that as well to say how do they uh, capacitate ESCOM financially for them to be able to to afford these, the diesel going forward because they, they don't have that budget as things stand. All right. At the beginning of this conversation, you were talking about we shouldn't uh, focus so much on fixing things that are going to be retired soon. So if that's the case, should we have been commissioning nine, not three uh, new power producers uh, in the next two years? We, we should be commissioning all 25 in the next two years and and we should we should we should basically 
um, be, be be closing on on bid window six as well, and 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 getting an additional six thousand meg six thousand to seven thousand megawatts that will come online um, almost the same time as the, the 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 three that have been signed now. So we need to move, to to move a gear up in terms of uh, uh, purchasing the, the 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 new generation capacity, um, and and ensure that in the next. 24 months, we've got enough generation capacity or more than enough generation capacity coming online. And we must also remember that with the opening up of the market, uh, we, we've got other initiatives from uh, IPPs that are that, that, that are signing some power purchase agreements with big power consumers who are planning to, to, to buy directly from IPPs and also uh, do wheeling through the the, the ESCOM uh, 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 lines. So those those projects as well, we are expecting that they will come live in the next uh, uh, year to two years or so. And and that combined with the various interventions that the president announced, we we expect that those interventions will start to bear fruit in the next twelve months or so. So we we can confidently say um, project that load shedding will be very much eased in the next year or so, and it could be the thing of the past in the in the next two years. Only if government follows up on the president's plan and, and also on the procurement of new generation capacity, they are also busy revising the, the integrated resource plan 2019 um, to, to, to allow for, for additional new generation capacity to come to come on board, as well as to allow for things such as battery storage and more gas to come online so that it can provide what many people call uh, a base load. I believe it takes about five years to build a nuclear power plant. Is there room in this energy mix to say, we'll do the renewable for the next uh, 24 months uh, and five years from now, we'll add a nuclear plant to that mix? Yes, a nuclear plant is it, it, it takes between five and, and ten years to build. Uh, if you take into consideration the entire process that a government needs to follow, um, and it can assist us. And, and nuclear is also a, a clean source of energy. Uh, however, nuclear is quite expensive, and and as things stand, we don't know where government will get money to build nuclear power stations. Um, the the minister has been talking about modular reactors, uh, small modular reactors. There there is no proven technology uh, as things stand on the small modular reactors, and South Africa does not have experience in that field. It's only countries like the the USA and Britain that are that are uh, piloting those uh, small modular reactors. In my view, we should go for bigger reactors if we are, we are going for nuclear. And we, we should plan it for uh, uh, on the, on the long term kind of basis. We've got expertise in South Africa. They, they've been running the Quebec nuclear power station very well and very safe. Escom has got those expertise. We've got also people who who, who, were, who were working in the nuclear industry uh, for a very long time. Nexa also has some expertise here in South Africa, but not for small modular reactors, for big reactors such as the ones that we have in Quebec. All right. So it looks like next two years there will be something online. Not enough because you would prefer all 25 be online by then. What about in the interim? Um, there's a lot of debate about management, about the board composition, and depending on who you talk to, you can't get the same answer. So I just wonder your thoughts about what we do today. Could, should a question about leadership be raised? Um, I, I wouldn't uh, say the question about leadership shouldn't be raised because we've got a crisis. People must raise those questions, but they must raise those questions in context. We, we, they, they must, they must uh, appreciate the fact that load shedding is not an event; it's a process. Load shedding did not start yesterday. It didn't start when when Andre Dereta and his team came came on board. It didn't start when the new board came on board. It started long time ago. And and I I, I, I agree with the former President Tawambeki when he, he said that 
as much as we must look at the current management, we must also look at what the previous management has done uh, that led us to us to where we are. So, if I have to take you back to to the to the to the root cause of the problem, the main problem is that the energy availability factor of the coal fleet has deteriorated over time, and that did not happen yesterday. If since 2011, in 2010, the energy availability factor was above 80 percent. And it started deteriorating in 2011. It went down to below, uh, 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 to just above 70% in, in, in 20, around 2015, 2016. And then it, it, it went up in 2017 and 2018, and then it continued to, to, to plummet down again. That tells you that it's a system that, that has been deteriorating over time. It's not a system that deteriorated because there was a, a suddenly a bad ESCOM management. The current management has been trying to fight this system uh, for quite a long time. It, the, the system has been neglected in terms of maintenance. They, 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 they've indicated as ESCOM that some of the, in some of the power stations, uh, they, they find parts that are already obsolete. And in, in some of the power stations, when you talk to some of the ESCOM engineers, they will tell you that because of the previous uh, ways of, of doing things, some of these plants, you, you find makeshift kind of uh, maintenance that was done on them. That's why right. we are where we are today, because when you fix one, one part, the other breaks. And in certain instances, when, you, when, when one part breaks, you need to, to, to replace a whole lot of things because some of the parts are, are already obsolete. Professor uh, Rampeli, Mam it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much indeed uh, for your insights. And uh, perhaps this is a significant step towards uh, solving our uh, energy drama. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right, that's uh, Professor Samson Mampueli, who's an energy expert from Stellenbosch University Center for uh, Renewable Sustainable Energy Studies and uh, talking about uh, these new uh, independent uh, power producers that are being brought online and uh, we should have more energy uh, in 24 months' time.